Well, run it down your career so far. Uh, I started off at Milford um, when I was 15. Uh, from there, I went to Cass for a year. Um, then back to Milford for a year. Then stayed at Leeds for a year. Then from Leeds, I went to York for three years. And then I signed at Wakefield. And then I went to June. You had, a, you had a loan spell at London, didn't you? I remember it, I remember it. When he used to come back from your loan spell, he's like me just daydreaming up and down doing his work. And he's like going, London, <laughs> London. <laughs> <laughs> then he printed the London channel on the head. That's what we saw the end, that's what we saw the end. I came up with a copy accent as well. Oh dear. I wish you listened to Alex Simmons' old uh, DJ CDs. He's, he's had a copy co- co- accent as well. <laughs> <laughs> might, we might play one or two tunes for a bit later on. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Um, it's obviously testimonial uh, to someone like Jamie or to Jamie Peake. Jamie Peake got something on the 25th, I believe, against Bradford. Outstanding game at Edinburgh. Jamie Peacock, he's obviously done very well out of the game of rugby league. He's, he's made a lot of money. He's, you know, very clever bloke, got businesses set up um, with his camps and stuff, and he's, uh, he's speaking. What are you going to do after this? Obviously, you've had a bit of a different career, you haven't been as successful on the mm-hmm. field. So what does the testimonial mean to you as a player? To be honest, uh, the testimonial to me is not just about making the money. It's, um, I want everybody to enjoy it. I want everybody to, to look back at it and say, you know, it was, it, was a good, it was a good season. And, you know, look back at my career and say, like, I, I, did, I did my best. Um, I'm, I'm hoping people are going to come and come and support every event that we do. We're trying to put some good events on. So, you know, I know people like Jamie, uh, our Jamie's, they they had successful times doing this. Uh, I'm hoping just hoping that with the the scale of Jules to Leeds, that it's going to be just as just as successful. We've got some some big events planned for the testimonial. So we really want people to come down this Sunday and vote with your feet. Come down, support the game. Dewsbury versus Salford. It's a great little stadium, Dewsbury. Mm-hmm. It's great people down there, some real characters. Uh, I've met when I've been down there to do various events. Now, your testimonial calendar launch, that started under a bit of a cloud. Do you want to tell us a story? I, I wouldn't say a cloud, but um, it was interesting. We, um, well, you, you helped me organise it and we did, uh, we did like a sort of a calendar launch. Um, you know, and we had, we had um, about 50, 60 people down there. Um, and you, your idea to do an I'm a celebrity and get me out of here type bush took a trial. Yeah. Um, so I've gone down to Benny's Butchers, picked up a pig's head, um, a bag of hearts and a bag of liver. I <laughs> forgot to cook them. And, uh, <laughs> we ended up, um, four or five of lads ended up eating them and getting really sick and <laughs> having food poisoning for like a, a few weeks. And, you know, we, the lads missed the, the, the game against bo- uh, Batley Boxing Day. And, um, what caught, it absolutely it? fuming at me. Yeah, yeah, and it made out he wasn't bothered at first when we were all pulling and when I went into training he didn't say a word to me, just oh, stared right through me. <laughs> like, <laughs> he just, he's not right now, we're all right now, but at the time you can imagine why, you know, my stupidity cost, cost um, half of the players their, their first game back, so. Yeah, Wago was not happy. Lago no, not, and the lads were nothing against it, lads were but you know, it was all a bit of fun, but it was just, uh, it just went a bit rough. He's a great coach him, all right. I rate him, I think he's a good lad. Uh, I think he flew through his level three coaching in a, in a record time in a year. Mm. And uh, I spoke to him uh, early on uh, in last year. He's really keen for next year. He looks to have a really good start. And, uh, you know, this new league system as well, there's a, there's a chance for teams like Jusbury to really compete and, you know, one day come up with a Super League. Is that, is that the long-term goal for Jusbury? Yeah, to be honest, obviously the, the teams come down like Bradford and... Uh, London, and it's going to be probably toughest year it's ever been in championship. We've got people like Ferguson and things like Lee, and obviously Sheffield as well. There's some very good sides. Um, there'll be a few fighting for that fourth place. Um, teams like us, Sheffield, Batley, people like that will be, will be, will be, it'll be hard. It'll be a tough, a tough season. Um, but we've got, we've got our upside. We're quite confident. We've, we've got a very good side. Uh, we've got a good, a good young side. Um, with a mix of experience. So. We're confident on this day we can beat any team. It's just about consistency in championship. And I think that's where a lot of teams will fall short. Um, if they're not, if they're not consistent for a year, they'll struggle. Consistency is important, but stability as well. Obviously, with a lot of the smaller clubs, he's got a great chairman, hasn't he? He's always living within his means in terms of a, an organisation. He's just got the three G pitches, which brings a lot of revenue. Mm. And I think the plan is now is a good season ticket deal on it. Just yeah. so we we'll get local, uh, the local community. In there as well. Yeah, they're building, they're building um, a big complex behind you the ground, um, and they've just built another standard you as well. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of things going on there behind the scenes, and it's best I've seen it since I've been there. I've been there the best part of 10 years, and it's 
um, it's best I've seen it. You know, it's never had as much buzz around players as it has now. So it's, it's looking good for the future. Every town I talk at is demographics as well. There's a big Asian uh, community, um, population all there. We actually found uh, a Pakistani rugby league jersey today. Um, I thought I'd bring that on and share that. The game is growing. And uh, it'd be great to get people through the doors at Jewsbury so they can understand the sport and, uh, and get more of them in there. We had a crumb on the show a few weeks ago. That's his um, big white ribbon campaign shirt. Yeah. Uh, wearing the white ribbon here uh, against the uh, Valentine Swimming. That's the one, yeah. Um, it's a great campaign that he comes part of, uh, driving it. So he's a good bloke and he's massively involved with Pakistan rugby. He did ask Austin if you could play because you've got Asian in you. No, I've got a bit of everything in here for honest. Yeah. Um, I think there's been a few countries knocking at the door before any good. <laughs> <laughs> used to be a Jamaican or Caribbean rugby league team, didn't they? Would you have ever considered playing for them? They actually, they actually contacted me. I don't know if they've ever got in touch with you, but we've, it used to be West Indies rugby league, um, and they went touring America and, and things like that. Um, and they've done quite well, especially in the sevens tournaments and stuff, and they were trying to get a foot World Cup in a few years. Um, but they've changed now to Jamaica rugby league. I think so. It's, I think, yeah, I think um, I think Carl Price and Jermaine Ray and all them up players from Danny Mills and um, you know it's it's a bit I'm, I'm a bit great actually um, because I'm from I'm from Saint Kitts all my family from Saint Kitts our family from Saint Kitts um, and obviously changing to Jamaica now so we can't we're not eligible. It's the old is it the old? I don't know yeah, why. I'll be alright. I'm Jamaican. So. Jamaican. Jamaican. Come on, we're Jamaican. Come on. Come on. Cool, well, boy, yeah. It's, uh, it's a big, big test of Some other events coming up on the testimonial. Because testimonial is more than a game. It's, it's a period in time, three month testimonial. So the game starts it on the 11th of January. We need everyone to come down if you can this Sunday. Come down to Dewsbury. If you haven't got no rugby league to watch, just come down, support this lad. He's been a great lad for a long time within the game. Come down and support him. Um, also, you've got a golf day. Yeah, I've got a golf day planned on the 14th of March. Um, we're going to put it out on on um, Twitter and Facebook and, and um, we've got various things, we've got some posters done and stuff. Um, we've got our gentleman's dinner uh, on the, I think it's the 10th of April, the day before my testimonial ends. I've got probably a few more events coming out, I probably can't speak about because it's in the pipeline. But, definitely, um, definitely, definitely doing a dance event. That's, that is mm. confirmed. So it'll be at the Battle of Frontier Club. Um, we don't know a date yet, I need to speak to Mark, who's going to organise it with us. He's a pro-am. So rugby league players, Get to play with like, like you see Phil Taylor and you Raymond Van Barneveld. Mm. Van, that's right, isn't it? Van Barneveld. Van, Van Barneveld. And uh, yeah, you get to see, so be a rugby league player with a professional dance person, pro am, throwing arrows, having a laugh, great banter. I'll be hosting it, might have a few arrows myself, I, do, I don't mind the arrows. You're pretty good, Jonesy. I'm alright, I was. Um, I've played against Van Barneveld. Uh, you beat him? <laughs> I did, yeah, I threw the uh, double four. Uh, to knock him out, and you and Dowd, he's part of the look with you and Dowd, if you remember him. I was with old, old, Bobby, old Bobby George. Yeah, so uh, I enjoyed that. I was at the Frontier as well. Uh, unfortunately, he got his own back on me in the, the semi final, so I didn't make the final. But I'll go to Austin and I'll, I'll go try and, uh, and win it there. <laughs> Obviously, all your events are pretty funny. You have a, a lot of uh, banner and juice there. You, mm-hmm. you uh, paint people's wheels pink and all kinds of carry on. What's, what's probably the best prank you've ever done? Anybody? I couldn't, I couldn't probably say on TV, but that one, that one I've had to do. My one got painted pink actually. Um, we've had a few incidents of um, soiling people's protein shakers and you know, just stuff like that. Not, not too, not too bad. But not too fat. Not too bad. Not in the not in the changing rooms anyway. Why did your wheels get painted pink? Um, I can't remember. I think um, I think I cut some. 20 pound notes up in the wallet. Come <laughs> 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 back to the bike, like so. But um, it's all fun again. We've got really good banter with Jimsley. Always has been since I've been there. It's one of the reasons why I love training and being out lads and all my best mates. And like um, like I said before, there's not many jobs where you can go and enjoy doing something you love with all your friends and your best friends. And even though it's not the highest paid job in the world, it's still some of that I love doing. What, um, what's your favourite moment? What's your, what's your highlight of career, Jimsley? Um, probably when we went unbeaten, we did a, year, a season when we won every game. Um, and I think we were the first professional rugby league team to do it in 100 years. Or oh, second, I think, holding it as well once. Um, so that stands out. Um, but we've been, we've been a few, me just turning up at training, seeing all boys, it puts a smile on my face. So that just every day training for me. Absolutely. You've got the biggest fullback in the world. I'll no, talk to this about yeah. his ball. You were saying you were 21 and a half stone. I think he's probably 20, not, he's 129 kilograms. I think he got weighed at the beginning of the pre-season. He's playing full-back, so he's got a few pounds to drop before the season starts. Quick as well, isn't he? He's a quality player, mate. And if, 
if he's on form, you know, we play well. Um, he just needs to get a little bit fit and a, bit, a little bit more enthusiastic in training. And yeah. um, I'm sure he'll be good, but price is pricey, and that's how, that's how he's always missing. It's, it's funny, isn't it? Because obviously Leon is just sort of driven and focused, and he seems to be all over him. Price is very laid back, but he's a class player. To be honest, I think the car's probably got more potential, had more potential than Leon. Leon's quality does.